Dan, what's up? What do you know about time travel? Oh, I know a lot. I think. I think I do. <laughs> Where are you right now? I'm in Brazil. Okay. Muji just cruises. Yeah. Well, can you show me around? So where exactly are you located in Brazil? So I'm in a, I'm in a little, well, not so little. I'm in a city called Mogi das Cruzes. It's a southern, it's southern Brazil. Uh, not southernmost, but pretty close to the southernmost part of Brazil. Near Rio de Janeiro. Why does a guy from Pennsylvania pick up and go to Brazil? Uh, well, long story short, uh, a friend of mine, uh, he was dating a woman from here, uh, a long time ago, 2008. And I came here with him to meet her, uh, before she moved to the United States. And then two years ago, I came back here because I liked it a lot and made some friends. And now I'm back for my third time. So, uh, where are we at with this time travel? Cause this would be a whole lot easier in person in my experience i think time is more of a concept that we have sort of developed as people but uh i would love to to sit down with you and give you some of my thoughts on on, on what i think about the subject it smells interesting so where the f we at with time travel i don't know man <laughs> I have a lot of thoughts on that. Thanks for visiting from Brazil. Welcome officially to the ADH Dan podcast. I'm pumped, dude. All right. All Dan right. and Dan. Yeah. Yeah. Double D. Double D. <laughs> I was thinking about it, and I don't know if we talked about this before, but out of all of the guests I've had on here, I've known you longest. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. I'm going to have to fact wow. check myself. But I think it was like 98. It was 97. 97? Yeah. Pro yeah. Bunch of skate rats. Yeah. That's what we are. Um, but this is Dan, Danny Moore, Danny, Dan Moniger. Yeah, he's a good guy. Thanks, man. You too. So I made something for you. I made this. It, the paint might still be a little bit wet. Because I just made this like within wow. the past half hour, so. But then I put the dates on there that we. That was the original date that we did from Brazil. Yeah. So. I'm a numbers guy, so I'm like. What I think is kind of crazy about that, yeah, I'm still getting pain on myself. Is. Thank you. We talked about time travel. Yeah. And then last night I was looking at that footage, and I was like, to find time travel because when I watch that footage, it's like, that just happened. But then you look at the actual, like the numbers, the measurement that we put on time, yeah. and it's like, wow, okay, that was over two years ago? Yeah. So, we time traveled. Yeah. That's actually my main thought on the time travel or not necessarily the travel part, but the understanding of it is like the feeling part of it. You know, like time is obviously like something that we measure and it's like we go to work at a certain time or if we're meeting someone like I might, I, you said be at my house at one. There's like that part of it. But then to me, the part that's more meaningful that makes me inquire and wonder about time travel is like the feeling aspect. I remember going to Sir Skate for school parties wow yeah and i remember one night coming home and i was pr it was probably around fifth or sixth grade and i remember thinking to myself i know that i was just there tonight like i know literally that i was just there tonight but also it's like it didn't feel necessarily like i was just there earlier in the night it felt like i was there a long time ago 
because I was, I feel that there's memories that are similar, that they feel like they happened at the same time, even though they didn't based on the clock. And I think that's like a big element that is really cool to me. Do you think that like deja vu plays into that Kinda a little like bit? That. Or what's deja vu for you? For me, I just feel like I get hit with it out of nowhere. And it's like, I've been here, I've felt this, I've been in this exact state before. And then just about as soon as it hits and I feel that, it's gone. And it's like, wait, what, what, what? Like, it's really like, I've heard people say it's a glitch in the matrix and that's kind of what I feel like it is. I'm gonna get super emotional today. No, good you're good. Uh, you and I, you know, obviously, you know, one of our connections is God and like that's a hard one because there's a lot of good but there's a lot of like F you God like where were you for me where were you for my friends like it's complicated it's hard to talk about but um I don't I don't know where I'm going with that I'm not gonna say too much about that right now but like I, I do know why I brought that up just now was that, like, on the way here, I, I knew God would set me up. He's been setting me up all day. Like, whatever God is, whoever God is, whatever God is, like, God's real. I, I don't say that to be preachy. Like, the last thing that I want to do, and I am guilty of it, is preach at someone and be like, this is what you should believe. But, like, there's no way I can deny love in my life when i look at the bible like for the most part i think a lot of it is a lot of bs which not all of it but like there's no way that i can say that god is not real and people can interpret that however they want but um it's the connection for me it's not so much about the person it's about like the connection that we have together yeah and those shared memories and moments so how does it feel to actually be here and on the show? It's a huge honor. It's awesome. Um, I don't know what to say. Yeah. <laughs> You're awesome. Uh, your style um, as an artist, as a videographer, like, it's something that we enjoy. Like, you're a musician, uh, but I, I feel that your ability to do lighting and video and editing, like, there's like a musician like side to that which th this could be like an exaggeration here but take it as a compliment i feel like you have a similar quality to like someone like stanley kubrick like as far as your visuals like it's there you know what i mean like i think there's inherent innate gifts that certain people have and i think that when it comes to uh music your musician and video like I just, I appreciate what you do. I, it, I enjoy it. It makes me happy. You know, uh, I'm glad that you are like a, basically a self-made video producer. It's always hard for me to receive compliments like that because everyone, like anyone who makes anything, not necessarily just creatively, but anyone who creates anything, they're always their biggest critic right. so i'll always look at things and just say ah, i should have done that or i didn't expose right or just you know the long list of things and that's something i i mean i everyone does it but it's just a continuing just a learning process so yeah but i love when the video and the music when i can do things that they come together yeah like like just doing video is one thing and it's great just doing music but when like some of the videos i've done when i can incorporate both that's like that's great for me yeah i mean as an artist like it is a blessing and a curse to uh work on something uh i think that um the benefit to being critical and hard on yourself is that it makes you better. Uh, so I think that that's definitely something that we need. But I would say that probably most artists would agree uh, that like we need to calm it down sometimes and not be so hard on ourselves. 
um, because it's something that we enjoy. And part of the criticalness is because we know that like if the song sounds better or if the or if the logo or whatever looks better it's gonna be better so it's it's good but like if we had to find that balance of like enjoying it and making it better but you know thus is life it's complicated no and that's it's also a tough thing because like better the, the the idea of being better that's relative like relative to what like somebody else's work because if that's the case then like they say comparison is the thief of joy so you're uh, like you need to find your own kind of style with whatever you do and just do it i and just not think about <laughs> kind of going back to the name change don't don't worry about what other people think just do whatever you know yeah i'm i'm just throwing this in here because uh i know that some of my brazilian friends will be watching this uh i want to refer to dan was saying about getting his name changed he actually legally changed his name to dan jarris mcnulty he is officially legally dan jarris mcnulty which for my english speaking brazilian friends that's obviously dangerous mcnulty yeah what how do you is there a word for that like onomatopoeia if it's a word sure. but it's like like a pun but not quite a pun i don't know i'm losing my mind already um my thoughts just quickly and i'm, I'm curious to see uh what you would have to say um it's interesting that you change your name to uh Dan Jarris, you know, kind of like a play on dangerous because I, uh, you know, I heard um, Jordan Peterson, who's a well known psychiatrist, uh, explain how, as a man or even as a woman, it's good to be dangerous. And a lot of people really gave him a lot of crap for that because they're like, why would you want to be dangerous? Like, be violent. And he was like, I, again, I'm summarizing what he said, but he was like, I'm not saying be violent. Like, of course I'm not. He's a nice guy. But he was saying, like, it's good to be dangerous, okay? Because basically, like, if you are dangerous and you choose to be nice, then you're you're basically showing and demonstrating self-control. And it's interesting, too, because, you know, uh, when I was 24, I packed up my car and I moved out to California to go to a church, Bethel Church. And yeah, one of the I do want to hear like your yeah. timeline in like five minutes if you can even do that. Uh, okay, How like a you... summarized timeline. Yeah, like yeah, the pr progression. I'll do that. Right. Um, so, but when I went out to Bethel Church, uh, I learned a lot of really cool things there. And one of the one of the messages that I remember that was one of the biggest was how, you know, and again, I have mixed feelings on the Bible, so whatever but one of the one of the pastors there i think it was danny silk he was talking about how um you know in one of the passages jesus tells his disciples to like take a sword with them and you know they do and it's it's in like the garden of gethsemane and one of the one of the you know disciples like cuts off the ear of some guy and it says that jesus like picked up the guy's ear and like put it back on him and healed him but the point of the message of what this pastor was saying and like i said i'm pretty sure it was danny silk so there's our 3d um whatever um <laughs> he was saying was that this this was the cool part was that he was saying is that you know your ability to love is stronger when you're able to hurt someone so that's where the dangerous thing comes in and jordan peterson back to how i was saying about him was he was explaining like someone that's not dangerous that's where it's scary because if you're weak and you can't exhibit strength you're more likely to hurt someone because you're afraid mm. wow. but people that are strong that choose to love instead of hurt it's good that they're dangerous hmm. Hmm. Do you want a dangerous father or do you want a weak father? If someone comes against us, they can protect us. You know what I mean? You yeah. would do that for your kids. Right. Okay. I, I want to hear the progression of Dan from when you first moved out of PA. Or you went to like 
the Art Institute. Yeah. I guess that was in Pittsburgh. Yeah, Pittsburgh. Was that before you went to California? Yes. Okay, so maybe start it going to the Art Institute, your experience there. Okay, yeah. Um, I'll go just slightly back before that. I went to Winston Trade School. I got a degree in horticulture, landscaping, and turf management. Um, Winston Trade School, that was a good school. Graduated from there. Um, went on a couple missions trips. It's actually the first time I went to Brazil was 2003. I went to Curitiba with Global Awakening with Randy Clark. It was a great time. Um, I'm skipping over a bunch of stuff, but I'm giving you the five minute Cliff version. Notes. I'm going to try to. But um, yeah, went to, uh, went to Brazil. Um, went to Ukraine. Actually went to Ukraine first. And uh, then... I came back, did some landscaping, uh, and then I went to the Art Institute, and I was there for like a year and a half. Um, it's shorter than most schools, plus I already had credits from Williamson. Went for video. Yeah, it was a good experience, slash bad. Um, I didn't really see it as a bad experience at the time, but looking back, I feel like a lot of schools, mine in particular, like they were just in it mostly for the money. Um, again, I'm not trying to, I don't want to make this like a, I don't want to get all negative on this podcast, but that's, that's why I said about with you, I think it's cool that you didn't have to, or that you, you know, you did it, you learned on your own. I'm not suggesting that people shouldn't go to a school, but I think it's good to, there's other ways. Um, From my understanding, just listening to like cinematography podcasts and everything, the two biggest benefits to going to a school is uh number one the connections so you meet so many people in that field so if somebody gets hired onto a big project it's like oh yeah i remember dan from the art institute i want to bring him with me so that's huge but then also just the hands-on with the equipment like because you get like state-of-the-art equipment at the time so yeah, that's those are two of the benefits. But I feel like you can learn it on your own. Yeah. But sorry. No, 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 no. Um, I actually worked in the video photo department when I went to the Art Institute. Uh, so yeah, we had good equipment. It's funny though because I'm sure anyone would know this, but probably my iPhone 15 uh, has well beyond what we were using i think it was like the best the best camera that we had was like i think it was like a panasonic 24p it was good like but probably the i probably even the iphone any you know better video than that but it's just interesting how that all progresses um i always felt kind of overwhelmed with that as far as like uh i felt like i never really knew enough about the technical side um which is again one of the reasons why i kind of like respect you because you learned it you know on your own um i am just trying to think what next for the for the five minute okay so enough about the art institute went there um how long were you there how many years uh it was like it was like a year and a half okay i graduated in december uh 2005 and then in May of 2006, I moved out to California, and uh, I was out there for about two years. Um, it was a great experience. I lived in Redding, California. Um, most of the reason that I went there was to be part of Bethel Church. That's a big part of my life. Um, not necessarily anymore, but it is part of my story. So, like, I want to try to represent it without talking it, without over talking it, because I definitely can be like that is that like God is a big part of my life but yet it's it's like it has evolved you know um because it's very complicated and for me like I said um I still value certain parts of the Bible but I think overall my perspective on the Bible is that it's a book that was written by humans that was inspired by God I don't believe that every word in there is like the word of God and of course you know I'm very aware that like there's people out there that are like atheists which I feel like an atheist sometimes um you know but 
I uh, I couldn't really talk about my life and who I am if I didn't talk about the God part of it or like the Bible. And I think that like, if someone were to ask me like, what's the most important thing? Like, what would you like to see the rest of your life be? Like, I'd like to, this sounds silly, but like probably not start a church, but I'd like to be part of a church or maybe an organization or a group of people that like do talk about spiritual things kind of like you and I do, but in a way that's like, it's not necessarily traditional. And I don't mean like that we, I don't mean that like a group of people that like purposely sets out to be like against tradition. Cause that is my biggest, like my biggest issue with like atheism, which I said, I kind of am is like, I feel like they're purposely trying to like prove that God isn't real or that if you're a Christian, you're a moron. And it's like, aren't you doing kind of the same thing that you're accusing? I feel that there's a ton of people that aren't Christian or atheist. You know, kind of like, I feel like there's a, not to get political, but like, I feel like there's a ton of people that are not Republican or Democrat, liberal or conservative. Right. And I think that there's, so, I, think I think we have so much more too. in common than anything, which I'm a word guy and it's like media. I have a degree in video production in media, you know? Um, media, the word media has a lot of meetings and like one of the main meetings of media is like in the middle or like medium, like, you know, what medium of art are you, are you doing? Are you creating like a newspaper article? Are you creating a painting? Are you using clay for sculpture? Those are all mediums. Or even right. if you want to get like weirdo, it's like, you know, there's people that say they're mediums, that they're channeling spirits. Like there's so many things to that word that I feel that it is something for me that's like, I feel that there's a balance in life and I think people have more in common. And I feel that the media, meaning the corporate media, I feel that their number one goal, and, and again, don't wanna to get too worked up about this, but I feel that the corporate media, the people that are doing it for money, their number one goal is to divide us. And maybe that's not their number one goal, but it certainly feels like it's one of their goals. And, and ultimately, I do believe that there is a deep state, whatever exactly that is. I do believe that there is a secret government that, you know, to whatever degree is controlling our country and other countries. I think it's true. I don't think that's conspiracy whatsoever. And I think that honestly, again, I'll try not to say too much about this and maybe talk about it later. I believe in this next election, we are not going to have a President Biden. I think it's going to be Trump or Kennedy. I personally think that realistically, Man, Kennedy, I've been watching some of his YouTube dude, come stuff. Come on. He is awesome. Dude. That's who I want to win. But I think that realistically, I think Trump is most likely to win. I know that um, I would rather that Kennedy win. But I think that, you know, there's things that I don't like about Trump, but he is not what the media paints him out to be. He is not this terrible person. I'm not excusing any of the dumb things that he said, but like, it's like, yo media, you know, you, the one that I just referenced to as being like, you know, corrupt, like you're the ones that are the evil that you're, you're, you're accusing him of all this stuff, which I'm not saying he's innocent, but it's like you, the ones talking about him are the ones that are doing what you're saying he's doing. Yeah. They're con constructing the narrative around him. Right. And just pointing literally the lens at him, showing him at his worst. And I'm not a hundred percent like sold out Trump supporter but I, I look at the two options that they do spoon feed us it's like you either have this crazy uh, super controversial Trump or you have a mentally deteriorating Biden it's right like, why are you spoon feeding these candidates to us that's why RFK I, I, RFK Jr. It's going to be hard for RFK to win, but I think that he can do it. And the main the main hurdle that he has to overcome is, and I'm trying to be respectful when I say this, the main hurdle that he has to overcome is, from what I understand, most people that vote are older. And most older people don't really engage with Instagram and YouTube and all that. They're into the corporate news. 
Right. So the corporate news, the last thing they want older voters to know is that RFK is running. Right. And I believe this, and I don't think I'm exaggerating at all. I think if they knew, most of them would vote for him. Right. So literally, right. basically, what the media is doing is like trying to keep as quiet as they can to make sure that people don't know that he's running. But I think what's going to happen is there's enough young people like us. I mean, I'm 44, but I think that young people, younger people are going to talk to their older relatives. We still have like eight months till the election. My prediction is that in the next few months, Kennedy in the polls is going to surge beyond the other two candidates. He's already not that far behind, but I think there's going to come, and it's just my opinion, I think in the next couple months, he's going to surge ahead. And once once he does, it's it's over. Like, once he's ahead, they're not yeah. going to beat him. Well, in that older generation, they have the nostalgia with JFK, too. Exactly. And I know Republic older the older population, Republicans and Democrats alike, they didn't care what his affiliation was. It was just like they liked him. He was just a good guy. Yeah. John F. Somebody Kennedy didn't was think a good he was president. though. Yeah, he was a good <laughs> or president. At least a group of people. Yeah, he cared about he cared about people. He was against the war. Um I believe that he got killed because he was against the war and because he, you know, gave a famous speech about exposing the secret agencies according to we make more money as a country when we go to war right robert kennedy jr has flat out said that the cia killed his uncle robert kennedy's father robert kennedy senior told him junior yeah they killed your they killed your uncle i think that um for me some of my friends might be annoyed at me. Maybe they're not. But I do talk about Kennedy a lot. Um, and I think I, I think the main reason is just because for him to win, it literally will change so many things. Like, there's so many issues that he talks about. You said you were watching a lot of his videos. I'm curious to hear which ones you've watched. But there's just so many issues that he's going to address. You know, um, just basically... Without explaining it, each individual issue, like basically any issue that's like corrupt or wrong, like he's talked about it, whether it's, you know, let's just start with like the biggest win in politics, money in politics. He's saying like he basically wants to make it like illegal for corporations to give money to politicians. Like that is what the deep state is. Like it's companies giving money to politicians to do what they want them to do. He wants to end Lobbying. that. Lobbying. Exactly. Exactly. Or, you know, uh, uh, there's a whole lot of other issues. I'm, I'm specifically not saying any because I'll go on about it. But there's just so many issues that he has the right stance on it. And to be honest, to anyone out there listening to this, like, go to his Instagram. Go look up the videos. Go to YouTube. Like, you want to know what he says? It's on there. Uh, okay. I, I wanted to do want to go back to something. So you were saying at some point you want to be involved with something that's, like, spiritual, but maybe not necessarily traditional, but you don't want to sound like you kind of don't want to rock the boat, but right. So, okay. So a few years ago, I think it was 2020, the, for us, for us, YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. So talk a little bit about that and your ideas behind that channel or what you wanted to do and maybe the mask, like, and what I didn't do. Um, yeah, I started a YouTube channel called For Us. I really didn't do much with it, but the idea was, um, uh, again, it's like a reference to the Bible where, you know, God says that he is for us, not against us. And uh, that's something that I've tried to make uh, a value in my life is like spending less time and less energy being against something and being like for it, you know, again, I will apologize for more political comments, but it's like, I feel that a lot of people are like voting against someone. They're like, oh, I didn't really want to vote for this person, but right. I didn't like that other one. And it's like, can the you maybe grow up evils. and be an adult? <laughs> like, <laughs> anyways. Um, but yeah, the For Us channel, it's like, uh, I, I just wanted to like, I, I named it For Us because I wanted it to be basically like, sort of like a group that would like focus on 
like being for each other and like loving each other. And uh, I made this mask that actually was, uh, it was like a mix of like a donkey and an elephant. Cause in our, in our country for my Brazilian friends, uh, you know, uh, basically the Republican party is sort of represented by like an elephant and the Democrats are represented by like a donkey. So I made this mask with like donkey ears and like an elephant trunk and uh, Dan helped me film it. Uh, it's like one of the only videos that's on that uh, for us YouTube channel. Um, and basically hey, the idea of the mask was I wanted to like create a character that it's weird thinking about it now because like I made this mask and it was like, like you said, 2020. And then like literally like a few months later, um, well, I started making the mask before 2020, but anyways, the whole pandemic happened and we start having to like wear masks. So it was like weird that I had an idea of creating a character basically that I could like hide behind. Like that was the idea of the whole thing was like, and I talked to you about it was I wanted to make a character where I could talk about issues, but hide my face and my voice. Like we could like change the voice in editing so that you can't tell who's talking because I wanted to talk about issues that were controversial and um, and part of the idea of making the mask too was I, I was telling you that I wanted to like, you know, create this character that was like fictional. That it was clearly fictional. You know, it's a donkey ears and an elephant trunk. And, but talk about things that weren't fictional. Talk about things that are real so that people could make this connection between real life and then like fantasy or whatever. And I wanted to like, basically like say some things and then i wanted to like give that mask to other people and let them say things that they wanted to talk about and basically be like whatever you want to talk about like wear this mask we'll film it and then we'll like edit everything together and then the part of the reason why the name was for us was because i wanted the character to clearly be a symbol of like all these different people uh and their voices because it was just a mask, you know? That was the idea of like, if someone's wearing this mask, you can see like, if a woman's wearing it, you're gonna know it's a woman. Now we're getting into weird territory, but the idea was like, get men to wear it, get women to wear it, kids, you know, people of different skin colors. And basically like, there's all these different types of people wearing this mask and they're all saying things, but you're creating this character that's clearly like everyone coming into one. And that's why it was called For Us. And Basically, since then, I haven't done much with it, but maybe this podcast will be the thing that uh, pushes me in that direction. I think well, it will. I'll link the uh, the YouTube on here. Did you set up any other social media for it, or was it just No, just YouTube? the YouTube channel. Do you want a cigar? Uh, yeah. This is a Cuban. Sure. I'm talking about politics, and now it's like, oh, I'm Bill Clinton. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm yeah. just being stupid. Yeah, you, you you sent me a text like two days ago, and you were like, are you working this weekend? And I was like, no. And honestly, I thought you were just inviting me over. You know, I thought maybe Nick was here. Or you're having a party for your kids or whatever. And so that was like two days ago. But then like today, that's why I was saying like, I feel this was a God setup because it wasn't until today that I was like, what if this is for the podcast that like i think that that was god and like to me like i know i said earlier it's complicated to talk about god and i feel like if i went into it like i could be polarizing to people not that i want to be but like i know that spirituality can be polarizing you know but to me like that is what god is it's that thing that ma it's that person or thing or whatever that like connects us that makes us feel like there's like love or like a connection but i did I, f I felt like god was like dan's having you over for the podcast i i wasn't sure but then like i got here and you're like hey i walk in and i'm like that was you god you know what i mean it's kind of like the time travel thing like sometimes that's kind of how god works I, I, and again all these things are just me referencing my perspective on god is that like i think that's sometimes how it works is like you might get this hunch that something's God, but then it's like, you're not sure. But then like an hour later or whatever, or maybe the next day, or even maybe months later, you're like, that was you. It's not this clear cut thing. 
Right. Your thoughts on any of that? I, I just think about Rob Bell a lot, and that's somebody who I love. I mean, Rob we've Bell. talked with about him extensively, and you introduced me to Rob Bell. Yeah, he, for the most part, he. I just feel. I mean, when I started, when I read Love Wins and watched a few of his YouTube videos again, always going back to YouTube, um, I just felt like it was a serious awakening. It's like, for so long, I was, I always used the term force fed or spoon fed, but so long I was force fed this these ideologies, and then... I started to question them, but I was afraid to question them because you don't do that. You don't like, this is the way that it is. This is how it's set up. This is the way it's been for thousands of years. And I started to question. And then when I <coughs> first saw Rob Bell, it was like seriously an awakening. It was just great. But he has um, this thing about, I need to, I should be more prepared. You're, but you're fine. Then dude. again, it goes where it goes. You don't. It goes have, where it goes. Yeah, you missed it. You missed it earlier. I went, what did I miss, dude? <laughs> when welcome to the ADHD podcast. Right. It goes where it goes. It goes where it goes. It goes where it goes. Where it goes. But, but anyway, he had uh, said something before. He may even have a book about it. But it's basically like we all build our own god in our mind. And for the longest time, I didn't really understand that. But it's like through your experiences and your experiences alone in your mind you're defining god more every day through what he is teaching you personally so to me that's like i don't think there's one clear-cut god like i know i'm not saying there are multiple gods but i think I think we all experience him differently and we're all on a different path. Does that make any kind of sense? Like he's, he's teaching me things that he may not teach you or vice versa. Right. Um, so yeah, absolutely. We're all children of God. And again, that's not, I hope that doesn't come across as me being pushy to people that are atheists. I don't mean it like that. It's just that like, Call it whatever you want then. Call it we're children of the universe. Like, we didn't create right. ourselves. You know what I mean? We're here for a reason. And... What is the reason? To take it to that level? I mean, honestly, as hippie-ish as this sounds, I'm not going to apologize for it. Like, I believe that we were created. And I don't believe this all the time, but I believe it when, it, I believe it when I'm true to what I know. I believe that we were created to be loved. I believe that we were also created to love God. So it's like a gift to God, but really? I I believe that I was created to be loved on. I believe that there was this, if you want to say magical, let's get whatever weird with it. Um... I believe that there was this being that was full of life, that was full of love, that said, you know, I enjoy who I am and I want to make someone to feel the way that I do. And I'm going to create beings that I can love on. I mean, it, it does sound hippie-ish and it's easy to blow off. But I think that love is the thing that like holds us together. I think love wins, Rob Bell. Yeah, that's that's the book. I think it's right up there on the shelf. Actually, I'm gonna grab it real quick. Yeah, dude. So I have two books here. Got Rob Bell, Love Wins. Great book. And then we got The Philosophy of Time Travel by <laughs> Roberta Sparrow. I haven't heard of it, but I'm curious. Have you read The Philosophy of from Donnie Darko. Oh, okay, so that okay. I I've seen Donnie Darko, but I that book was referenced in the movie, right? Was that a real book or was that written? Uh, I it, it was just for the movie. Okay, but I when I first watched the movie, 
I was convinced that it was a real book. So I started going all over the internet trying to find it. And there are a bunch of like movie quality uh, copies of it. But this is just a paperback. And then it has like quotes from the movie on a few pages. But yeah, and then we got Love Wins. A book about heaven, hell, and the fate of every person who ever lived. I want to talk about Love Wins real quick. Like like you said, you and I met around like 97, and in 2009, I started working at... Dude, we're going on almost 30 years knowing each other. Heck yeah, dude. I started working with you at Del Grosso's uh, making sauce uh, in 2009, and I spent a lot of time thinking... When I was down in the packaging area, I'd, I'd, I'd spend a lot of time thinking, you know, because I'm working, but like a lot of it's watching the machine and making sure it doesn't yeah, break. Yeah, a lot of it was mindless. It was yeah. just right. repetition. And uh, I just, a lot of my beliefs changed at that time. Um, and I did have a lot of time to think when I was at work. But one of the things that really changed, which is like a big change for me was I came to the point where I was like, I just don't believe that a loving God like sends people to hell. That doesn't make any sense. It, it made no sense to me. And I mentioned it to you and you were like, hey, you might want to read this book, Love Wins. And that is like one of the main themes in Love Wins is that basically, um, again, I don't want to like misquote or whatever the book, but it's basically, yeah, it's so not less read it, read it if you read it, read it if you want to read it. Um, it's a good book but basically i don't think that it's necessarily that rob's saying that there isn't a hell um it's more that he's saying that like if there is a hell that like you don't go there forever like you you basically like god loves you like god didn't create you and is like oh yeah if you don't believe in me you're gonna burn forever like he basically again this is just my interpretation of the book was that he was saying like God loves you and God doesn't want you to suffer. So basically if you're suffering, it's because you're believing lies about God. Like he loves you. Again, that's an oversimplification of the book, but love like a is what God's now. about. The ADH Dan book club. Um, yeah. Okay. So I like that. I, I think, so my takeaway was that this part I'm a little gray on. I'm, I think he makes the argument that there is no actual hell, but you are create you in decisions that you make throughout your daily life, you are creating your own heaven or hell that you're living in mentally every day. So that's your choice. Um, my, so that's what my takeaway from the book. My thing is, and something I've been hung up on for quite a few years now. If God is an all-knowing God, when he created you, did he know or did he not know whether you would go to heaven or hell? And if he, if he doesn't know, then he's not all-knowing. And if he does know, then why would he create something in his image to send it to eternal right. torment yeah and i know that's a paradox it's just like you get stuck there's no we don't know the answer maybe yeah. someday we will but that's kind of where i sit right yeah now. again man it's it, like i want to be respectful uh the way that i say this because obviously you know with this podcast it's about you it's about you and i talking but realistically like people are going to watch it and i think about the people watching it and i think about like i don't want the purpose of us doing this podcast to be to get viewers but also i do right. because like if i'm saying something or you're saying something that's life-giving that's a blessing to people so yeah. like i'm doing a pretty good job at focusing that it's just you and i talking but in the back of my head i'm like thinking about the people watching it and honestly like that was my biggest concern with coming on this podcast with that is that i would focus too much on what am i going to say for the viewers and what are they going to think so well jokes on you i'm not recording on any of the cameras right so um 
because I know people will watch it and I want them to watch it, um, I'll be careful the way that I say this about with the Bible, but I think I think the issue, like I said earlier, I want to be for people, not against them, but I think my biggest issue with a lot of traditional Christians is that they say that they have a relationship with God, and I would argue like that they don't. They have a relationship with the Bible. And again, I don't want to just trash the Bible, but it's like the Bible does talk about hell. So if your focus in your relationship with God is that you're going to make the Bible the most important thing, then you're going to have a different perspective than someone that is trying to go directly to God and have a relationship with God rather than being spoon fed by the Bible or like a pastor or something like that. And I'm sure that there's people that would hear me say that and be like, that guy's blasphemous or whatever. That's what they say about Rob Bell. I'm not trying to just like disregard the Bible. I'm not trying to disregard conservative views. I think though, for me, I want to have a balance of like conservative views and liberal views. Yeah, yeah. Well, and one of the my issues with just politics, everything anymore, it's we put all of these ways of life and I, ideas into this category, and then everything else goes into this category. I mean, look at just about everything. You have uh, liberal, conservative, the two-party political system, uh, and I think... This is something that I thought about maybe a year ago. Sports, like just NFL, NBA, high school, yeah. college. I think I'm not into sports anymore. I, it just gave me too much anxiety because at the end of the day, I thought I'm not making benefiting at all. I'm not making money off of this. So why am I investing? Like making myself vulnerable and feeling this anxiety for something that has no value to my life really I'm, it's entertainment but I think sports sports were created to start you down the path of the two party system so you pick sides what do you think about that theory it's an it's a way to kind of sneak it in there okay oh i'm wearing red today i'm wearing blue oh yeah go patriots go whatever yeah you know i i think about that um it's interesting how like people will like root against a team it's like their rival team yeah um, but why it, again i don't want to i don't want to be too outspoken about it um i think that some people probably have rivalry that's like healthy but like there's definitely people that it's like unhealthy right where, where it's like so you hate that team so much um that that's all you're going to talk about and again i'm guilty of things like that i'm not i'm well, certainly oh, not innocent here. but same it's just here. like if someone was like all they're doing is like dissing their ex it's like so you're spending all your energy telling everyone how terrible they are and it's like i get it like i been there done that but it's like how much energy are we spending it goes back to the for us thing it's like am i spending my energy on what i'm against or am i spending on what i'm for because like we are the culmination of our choices and i'm trying to be a person that makes more good choices than bad i'm trying to be gracious with myself when i make bad choices and i'm trying to be gracious with others but something that um thankfully i've gotten a lot better at is just being grateful you know there's a word in portuguese uh the word for um the word in portuguese there's a word gracha down which is like the big gratefulness basically and like that's something that i think is like a big deal is like do i wake up every day and do i think about like what i'm thankful for do I think about like all the things that are good? Because like it is a fact, and that's actually something that I even learned way back in the day when I was at Bethel Church in California, was like, you know, it's interesting, again, I might go down some bunny trails here, but like, it's interesting that um, one of the things that I really learned at Bethel Church was uh, Pastor Johnson, he would talk a lot about thankfulness. And he said, you know, um, Jesus gave thanks for the, you know, there's like the parable or not the parable, but there was, 
it, it was not a parable according to the Bible. Uh, but um, Jesus, it says that Jesus took bread and fish and he gave thanks and it was multiplied and what pastor bill was suggesting was that the reason why the bread was multiplied was because jesus gave thanks for it and whether that's true or not it does it even really matter um that to me is um i i was i didn't say this but i was thinking it was to me that's kind of my perspective on the bible and god which i know this is going to be maybe divisive for people if they let it be but to me if God isn't even real, as far as like, if the God of the Bible isn't real, like if Jesus is just made up, if it's just like some people made up this person, does that necessarily make who God is any less? Which I'm sure some people be like, of course it does. I don't know that it would, because if God's made up, that means that people made God up. So... Does people making up God make it any more real? Because isn't the important thing about Jesus was that he gave his life for everyone else? Isn't the importance not whether he's real or not, but what he did? If a human came up, and again, like I said, I'm sure a lot of Christians will be like, how dare you say Jesus isn't real? I'm not saying that he's not. I'm just saying, like, are we missing the point if we're trying to prove or disprove if we're atheist or Christian, or are we really in the middle where the real thing is matter is like, how does it affect our lives? Does Jesus change me? It is, is my, is my purpose to go around and make other people's lives better to make my own life better instead of beating myself up, being gracious to myself, because I believe 100% that I think most of the pain that I endure and other people as well, you know, I'm 44 years old. I don't know everything, but I have kind of been around the world. Um, Literally. I think that most of the pain in the world is like us hating ourselves, you know, and I'm not saying that we should just like excuse ourselves and not hold ourselves accountable. Like if we do something wrong that hurts someone else, we should feel a sense of like wrongdoing. We should feel like it's not okay to hurt people, but so much of what we feel is just like this overwhelming condemnation. And even it even kind of like refers back to when we were talking about art of how like being overcritical on what we created, it's like, really, do we need to do that? Like we all do it to a certain degree. And I think that it's just so much better if we just are gracious with ourselves and everyone else. I don't know how I missed this earlier, but as we just keep talking about this about god and just existence explain to me how you can consider yourself an atheist sometimes because sometimes i feel like god doesn't exist it's 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 weird man it's like because you expect him to do something at certain times or he should have not done things at certain times or it's like it's like it's more like okay so we'll, we'll we'll start delving into this uh we didn't get into this yet um and i'm comfortable talking about it uh a lot of my life i've struggled with depression anxiety i've been suicidal thankfully not any time recently um but there's just been many times where i'm like talking to god like i feel like you're not even real like I'm, I don't even know why I'm even like talking to you right now. Like, I want to believe that you care about me. I want to believe that you're going to take this pain away from me, this depression. But like, like, just like F you, like, I don't even like, why am I even angry at you? You don't even exist. Like, there's just times where I feel that God isn't real, but God reminded me of something, uh, in 2020 early 2020 he reminded me that he was like every time every time that you have ever felt my presence it was always comforting and yes on the timeline uh you have spent a huge part of your life not feeling me which feels real but 
when you do feel my presence and I, you know, reveal my love to you, that is so much stronger than the loneliness. And I was like, I can't argue with you. Like when I, when I don't feel you, I want to argue with you and be like, it doesn't matter that I felt your love. You're like, like you were there for me before, but like the last couple of days, I don't feel you at all. Like what, like, yeah, I know I felt your presence before, but like, I want that all the time. And it's like, so like to anyone out there that is struggling, like if you are angry at God, or even if you're angry at me, cause I'm talking about how my life is better. I get that. Like the, sometimes the last thing you want to hear when you're upset and depressed is someone that's feeling better. Cause you're, you just want to be like, screw you. Like I'm, I'm a, I'm a mess right now right. and I get that but like all I'm simply saying is that as real and as strong as the negative emotions feel like the positive emotions that I felt are so much more strong and like there's no way that I can deny that like I've certainly lied in my life but like I couldn't even lie and say that like I've never felt God's love it's just not true right hmm. does that kind of answer your question I know it's kind of complicated I'll be honest I am living the ADH Dan podcast to the fullest, and I don't even remember the question. Oh, atheism. <laughs> there yeah, we go. yeah, yeah. I'm it just... goes where it goes. Question number one Moon landing, true or false? Probably true. I know you have an opinion. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> with, uh, in the light of the recent moon landing, the Odysseus, that was not manned, but. I even question that. But you, you're going with true. Okay. Probably. I don't know. Probably. Like percentage. I don't know, but to people that have watched the podcast, part of that is a reference back to Kristen. Oh. Uh, oh. Watch that episode. Okay. <laughs> so I, I try to have something from like every episode out here. Um, that's this is kind of a side note. But this is the book that she recommended because when I first said I didn't believe in the moon landing, she said, what could I say to make you change your mind? And that was just like, that just derails you when somebody says that to you because it's like, you have to change your mode of thinking to be like, okay, if I could accept this, what would be the reasoning? And this book, Think Again by Adam Grant, amazing. It's a good book. So from love wins to think again, I recommend it. Um, but I have that for her and then a tea bag. Okay. <laughs> because on the first episode she was like, oh wait, I need to get my tea first or something. Ah, like, okay. Question number two, yesterday or tomorrow? Tomorrow. Question number three, you've just unlocked time travel. What is the first thing you do? I'm not sure. Is there anything you'd like to see from the past? Or the future, I guess. I don't know. Hmm. I, 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 as cheesy as this might sound, I think I am cool with now. Yeah. I think that's a good thing. Yeah. If I could go to the future, I'd like to go to a month from now, or a month from the election and see where things are at really again you I, would I, spend your time travel power just to see who wins the 2024 election i said a month before meaning because i think we'll have a better idea again i know that i care more about politics than i should but part of the reason for that is because i have friends in brazil and i believe that our politics here affect the entire world and I think that um, the main reason for that is because of all the corruption and because I think, and this is my opinion, and I've been very vocal about this with my friends, I actually hold the media as more responsible for the political corruption because like, you're supposed to be the news. If you were telling the truth, then people would vote differently. Why are you not putting Kennedy or anyone else on the news so for me it's a matter of it's a matter of why it's so important for me for politics is because politics affect my life politics determine what is illegal and what is illegal and i don't really want to 
get into that right now, but like what's illegal and illegal affects our lives, oh, including yeah. why are people coming into our country illegally, which some of y'all are going to be like racism and eh. all of my friends that live here that are Brazilians are here legally. We should make it not easier to become legal, but it should be reasonable to become legal. And what's interesting too is that, you know, and the media doesn't want to talk about this, but like, obviously people have mixed feelings about Trump. A lot of people in Florida that voted for Trump were people that came here legally, became mm -hmm. citizens legally. And like, it's just a big issue for me. Like, I feel that politics are important to me because they affect my life and they affect everyone around the world. All right. So if you could time travel one month from like December 2024, that's when you were October. You'd go. A month before. Oh, a month before. Yeah. Oh. Question number four. I know you're into conspiracies. Which conspiracy do you believe is 100% true? Um, like the majority of the public would say, nope. You, that's that's wrong. That's a good seriously. Um, hmm. I'm surprised that I'm drawing a blank. Uh, I guess okay, yeah. Duh. Probably one of the main ones is I would say that I do believe that it is a conspiracy to hide the information that we know about UFOs, extraterrestrials. Um, we haven't even gone there. We haven't even gone there yet, but that's probably the one that is like the most, as far as like that I think about the most is like, I believe just anyone that's into like UFO cover up or any of that conspiracy, like w one of the go-tos is obviously Roswell. You know, we are told by uh, the military that there's a UFO and then like a day or two later, they're like, it was a weather balloon. It's like you didn't accidentally say that it was a UFO. If you weren't sure, you wouldn't have said anything. You tell us it's a UFO and now you're going to come back and be like, it's a weather balloon. You're, you're, you're lying. Right. You're trying to cover up the fact that maybe you shouldn't have said anything. I, I'm glad. I want to know. But like you're like, oh, let's tell them there's a UFO and then let's pretend like we didn't say that. Nope. Yeah. Conspiracy. You're lying. What about the Chinese weather balloon? Well, that's I don't know. Question. I don't even know much about that, but no. Last question. Question number five. Knees. Um, that's a reference to Nick. I don't know. Knees. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We're not going to get into that. Why I want to? Tr why? I would want to travel to a month before the election is because I feel I've been wondering like is there something that I can do to affect the election as far as going back to what I said is that I feel that the media is purposely not doing their job at letting people know that RFK is running and again I'm fine with Trump winning like I don't hate the guy I'm not against him I just think that RFK is a way better choice but like why I would want to travel to a month before the election is because I think then we'll have a better idea. And if I knew where we were at then, like this is going to sound crazy, but like part of the reason why I made that mask with the donkey ears and the elephant trunk was because I thought of like wearing that to DC and like making a scene and hopefully doing it in a way that I don't get arrested but like possibly, and this is where like I'll be honest. You would have fit in with those January six. Well, guys. there's. I, I'll be honest with you. Like there is some fear in me when I say this. But like part of the reason I made this mask is because I thought about like, what if I wore this in D.C. and just was like vocal about the corruption, and like, what if they shot me? Or no, I'm. I mean, I doubt that that would happen. But like, what if they, you know, arrested me, and then like, what if they? put me in jail for the rest of my life or you know what if they whatever they want to do the point being is that 
part of the idea of that mask wasn't just like, let's try to make a video that gets a bunch of views. Like part of it was like, no, let's let's make a video that's like on CNN. Would that be the same thing though? Because if you're talking about like a major network, then it's going to get a lot of views. It's it sounds crazy. Um, I just don't. I don't like being lied to. I don't like knowing that even though I live in one of the most blessed countries in the world and I'm very thankful to be here, I just don't like knowing that all of the potential that we have is just being stifled because if people stand up for what's right and it and it hurts the bottom line or the profit of these lobbyists that are paying politicians, then they get screwed over. For example, let's go there. It's been proven many times that psilocybin mushrooms are a medical treatment for depression and anxiety. They grow from the ground. The ground that God created. But they're illegal most places because... Mostly because pharmaceuticals want to make money off of drugs. Big pharma. Big pharma, which I said there's a bunch of things that Kennedy is against. Big pharma is one of the main ones. I am not against big pharma. I am not trying to be against anything. I want to focus on what I'm for. What I'm for in big pharma is you make drugs in a lab that are beneficial to people. Um, I would say probably more beneficial than hurtful. So I don't want you to lose all your money. I just want you to stop making money your focus. It doesn't make you happy. It helps. Trust me, I know. I was in Brazil for almost a year. They need more money there. They're poor. When you don't have money, it makes your life very hard. But it does not make you happy. It enhances your happiness. So my, I guess, challenge to Big Pharma is you already know that Kennedy's probably going to be your president. Realize that he's for you, okay? And realize that... Um, you got away with it for a long time. So not to, not to pat you on the back for your stuff, but like you're not going to keep getting away with it. People are passionate about liberty. That's what our country is founded on. I'm an American who spent time in other countries and I understand why people want to come here. And it's hard for me to forget my roots. It's hard for me to know that, you know, I didn't choose where I was born. And I think that it's important for me as an American to not just be thankful for what I have, but to share that with the rest of the world. Forever and ever. Amen. I like my trophy. Yeah, you'll have to display that. Funny story, actually, about this skate truck right here with okay. the wheels. So my birthday this past year, Nick picked me up. This was October 12th, 2023. Nick picked me up to take me to work. Well, because I didn't have a car at the time because that was when Sam burnt my Jeep down. You remember that? You were here for that. I was here. Yeah. So Nick was taking me to work. Work driving down Goucher by those storage units. Do I already, do we already talk to you about this? Cause you had a storage unit there. The attic? Yeah. Yeah, that's where all my stuff was at when I was in Brazil. Yeah. And I didn't pay my bill because I stayed in Brazil longer than I should have and lost everything. Live and learn. Okay, so we were on that road and we see a school bus. Well, then we see this deer flop out like just off the road and somebody hit it. So we, I called the non-emergency number. Nick's dragging it away from the road. It just, like, I think both of its back legs were shot. Not shot, but, like, completely crushed. 
So I call the non-emergency number, an officer comes and puts two rounds point blank in its head. The first one, the deer is still moving, which I should put some kind of disclaimer. This is kind of gruesome and graphic and PETA would hate it, but I mean, it, it had to be put down at this point. Right. So she puts one in it, it's still moving around, still breathing, like it, it was rough. So then she put another one in it and it's like, great start to a birthday, you know? So then we go to, we get to work and we take the drone out, uh, the work drone, we're getting some shots. We climb down into this ravine, down to this river. I think it's the Kanama River, um, like out on 56 toward Armagh. Okay. And we're like falling down this hill and dropping all over the place. And Nick fell into the water while we were there. Uh, when we parked, I found that skate truck. You found that? Oh, wow. So I would that's have never a really guessed. long dude, that's story. Not even, for, no, dude, that was a great story. I would have never guessed that. It, dude, if you wouldn't have told me that, I'm like, that's a truck from him. Yeah, so that's like, I feel, yeah, the story behind it, yeah, I like it. It's a good story, but, man. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this is going to be, I know this is, will be the first of multiple times you can come back. Absolutely. Um, just kind of getting back on it. Set all of this up this past weekend. It just feels so good to have this back because I, did I tell you we had sewer work like March of 23? Yeah, I remember. And I was here and it was all just ripped up. Yeah, tore everything apart, dust over everything. I it just it really messed me up. I was already not in the greatest mental space at the time, and then to have like. Like, I just feel like this is my space. This is my, uh, I don't know. It, it just, it did something to me that really messed me up. So to have it back, just, I can't even explain how good it feels. Yeah. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah. No, I really appreciate you coming out. I appreciate just the friendship that we've had over almost 30 years. Yeah. 27 we right feel now. young i know i do yeah you do yeah I feel you look it. young This just reminds me of like JRE because I listen to that all the time and like he'll politely be like can you pull the mic closer like because they don't have it close enough am I close enough to the mic yeah you're good I feel like Nick right now I don't know why but <laughs> I, that's funny I, he's been on here shout out to uh, Nick News he gets the joke ace Okay, uh, get up to the... Sorry, I'm... Get up on that. <laughs> get up on that mic. <laughs> up on that. You know... Yeah, I know.